All right, uh, Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. Or excuse me, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. Same book, different chapter. Now I... Uh, just a glimpse of uh, kind of what goes through my mind uh, when it's preaching time. Now, I, um, I don't know. I guess I know everybody has different views and different thoughts and opinions and whatnot, but church to me has always been it's time to hear from heaven. What does the Holy Spirit of God have to say through the preacher, through the word, to me? Uh, I truly hope. Um, that you don't come to church because of my winning personality. I hope you don't come to church because I'm uh, Pastor Jackson's uh, um, uh, successful son. I ho- <laughs> Thank you, Brother Pip. Ben, if you see that, I meant it. No, I, uh, uh, I, I, no and I mean that. I, I hope you don't come to church because you like me or like my wife or you like my kids or, you know, you kind of, you've been here for such a long time. It's just kind of become your thing. I hope you come to church, and I hope you go to any church. Uh, and I've done that, being out of state, uh, being in a truck. If, I'm, if I have the ability to get to a church on a Wednesday night, if I'm out of state, I want to do it because I want to hear from heaven. And uh, that's what church time's about. That's what this is about. We, brethren, we have met to worship. Uh, there's a small print in there. It says, and hear from heaven. What a cool uh, thought it is to even say that to hear from heaven, and I want to hear from heaven. And sometimes hearing from heaven is um, a brook in the way. Sometimes hearing from heaven is um, conviction, uh, where it's, whoa, I I need to get that right. I've been in messages and auditoriums before where the auditorium was brought to tears through um, a a, a story of of, of heartache and sorrow and suffering and, and pain, but perseverance and uh, 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 being redeemed by God's grace. And I've seen uh, uh, people flood the aisles with tears and embracing one another. And I've also been in auditoriums and hearing sermons before where <laughs> your hair's peeled back and you're gripping the pew and it's holy cow, holy spirit conviction like you would never experienced before. And to me, uh, it's a big deal being called the pastor, being called the man of God. To me, I still... I hide behind the, the silos, you know, as Gideon did when went and hide. And we're like, you're, wait, you're talking to me? The man of God, I, I know I should carry that with, with the weight that's behind it. Uh, but still to me, I, I feel like um, it's almost like David and Saul's armor. I have not proved these. Um, give me a few more years and maybe you can call me a man of God. Um, but I know, I know where I am and I know I try to carry the office. And as a coworker and I were speaking, act like you've been there. If, you know, you, people will believe you if you act like you've been there. Uh, they don't know the difference. Same thing with knocking on doors or sharing the gospel with somebody. Um, they don't know that it's the first time you've ever told anybody. They don't know that you may be bashful about knocking on doors or giving the gospel. They don't know. But if you go with God and you go with much prayer and you go with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his strength and in his wisdom and not on your own understanding, uh, you can make it through and, and turn around and give God the glory. And that's what I want to do. That's what I've always tried to do. And, and when I do every once in a while preach a good sermon, uh, I turn around and give God the glory. And I say, thank you, Lord, for that. Uh, but today, I, I always try to have a practical application, or you could say a point of contact, where you could, um, uh, anybody too cold? Before I get started, I don't want to ask again. I don't want to break up the sermon. Anybody? No? We're good. Okay, good. Um, that thermostat over there is saying we're about 72 degrees. I think that's a pretty comfortable degree compared to what's outside. Uh, but uh, I always want something practical, and that's what I've always liked uh, about uh, Pastor Jackson's preaching through the years is um, we may have went down deep to the ocean floor, but we always come up with a treasure. And sometimes we stay on the surface of the water and observe the sunset, so to speak, um, throughout the preaching. There's always something to take home. I don't want to, I've listened to all kinds of preachers and all kinds of sermons where we kind of, we, we kind of went 
around, you know, but we didn't really come up with anything. It was just kind of a going around in circles and let's observe some things. Uh, I like to hear from heaven. What does heaven have to say about my life? What does heaven have to say about me? As much as uh, we are, and we try to say we are, it's all about God, it's all about Jesus, and we give him credit. Without being selfish or prideful, it is about me. It is about you. Because if I am going to give an answer for my life and not for your life, and you won't answer for me, then I, I kind of want to know what's in it for me. I kind of want to know how I am supposed to behave and how I am supposed to act and how I am supposed to be a steward of the things that I've been given. And um, to really get a good gauge on me and mine and, 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 and how I'm supposed to behave, I have to evaluate something I do hundreds of times or maybe even thousands of times every single day, and you do it as well. And, and it's something called decisions, the decisions that we make. Uh, every, I mean, we make hundreds of them every day. Every time I change lanes in that semi-truck, every time I, I, I have to figure out where to park or, or turn my blinker on or how wide do I need to, to go out into the left lane to make this right-hand turn or, or whatever the case may be. And that, that's just my life, driving a truck and dealing with family and, and, and being a pastor and reading the Bible and praying and, and all the different decisions that we make through the day. I have to evaluate my decisions. Okay, so here we go. So in order to maybe hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant one day, I have to make all these decisions that will lead me there. Correct? Right, are you with me? You with me? We want to hear well done. All right, and if I want to hear well done, I have to, I have to do, hear and do a, the plan that will hear well done. Okay, so how do I do that? My decisions. Okay, well, how do I gauge my decisions? Well, Pastor Jackson preached a few, month, uh, a few weeks ago about the plumb line, about the plumb line. We gauge our lives by that plumb line or that T-square. We take that blade and we cut our life as close to the book. The book is the plumb line. And we, clo we cut it as close to the book as we possibly can. Now, it won't be perfect. It's going to have a little wiggle and a wag and a jog here and there because we're not perfect until we are transfigured like Christ was and we are the, like the spitting image of Christ. Now, what a neat thought that is. What a neat thought that is. Anybody, you wanted to be like somebody, do you have a role model or a hero growing up? Maybe it was a sports player or an actress or something. Miss Sarah? Dad. Dad, well, you wanted to be like dad. <laughs> that's That's... You could set the bar higher. No, I, I that, wanted to be like dad. Dad was my hero. Dad was my hero just because I saw dad on both ends of the spectrum. And I don't mean perfect and imperfect. I mean tenderhearted, and, and I don't mean hard-hearted, but I've seen him go tough as nails to people who needed it. Um, uh, uh, but some people said, I want to be like, be like Mike. And what they do, they buy his jersey and they buy his shoes. What, what's that? 31, yeah, if I was going to get to that, but Walter Payton, too. Well, if I was the running back, I wanted to run like sweetness. If I was a wide receiver, I wanted to catch like Jerry Rice or Randy Moss. Um, if I was a quarterback, which I didn't, uh, Steve Young, because he could throw and run. He was kind of the, I didn't want Brett Favre. Uh, he has the most interceptions to all quarterbacks anyway. Uh, but uh, Steve Young, you know, and um, all these different guys we emulated. Mine in basketball, because basketball was a big part of my life, and I was a, I'm an Indiana born, Indiana bred, and when I'm dead, I'm Indiana dead, amen. Uh, uh, it was Reggie Miller with the Indiana Pacers because, man, he could shoot the three ball, and I practiced the three ball clutch shots all the time. I'm 12 years old. We're playing in big um, uh, basketball tournaments at uh, Badger State in Wisconsin and doing all these, going all these places. And uh, uh, you had big old six foot something Harold Mack and big old six foot something David Rice and big old James Murphy and uh, uh, Ben and, um, and uh, Joe Poe. Ozzy and all these guys playing and uh, I sat on the bench with Jamal and Kyle Harris for a while you know and I always man I practice I practice I knew if I'm getting in this game I'm getting mine if they throw me the ball out on the three-pointer I'm shooting that thing I'm not passing it I'm shooting it and I got good at it man I was shooting and why man Reggie Miller I wanted to be like I went I didn't want to be Reggie Miller but I wanted to be like Reggie Miller I wanted it the same consistency, the same success. Um, I wanted to hit the shots at the end of the game. I wanted to be clutch. And I shot and I shot thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of shots at practice and Lakeside Park and all the things that took to be like him. And then um, 
Uh, throughout the years, it changed. I wanted to play with the, uh, the ferocity of, a, a, of a, um, a Michael Jordan or a Kobe Bryant. Just the, the, the passion and the, 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 the effort that they put into the game. I wanted to hit like Brian Urlacher and Ray Lewis. I remember these sports guys, I was huge into sports. I emulated these guys on the sports uh, uh, field. And, and uh, maybe some folks, it was an actor or an actress. Or uh, it might have been um, a musician. It might have been um, uh, Barry Manilow. You know, I don't know. It might have been Fabio for Brother Joe and that long hair. It, it might have been, who knows? But you wanted to emulate somebody. You know what? who God wants us to be like? He says, I want you to be like me. I want you to be like me. But for us peons down here on earth, we think God is this high, so high and so unattainable. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches in Jeremiah chapter 9 that for us, it, God wants us to glory in knowing him. Knowing him, but not just know him, but know what pleases him. God says, I want you to be like me. So I'm going to show you how to be like me. I want you to be like Jesus. And the closer you try to be like Jesus, the more you are like me. So one day, and that's the neat thought, one day I will be like God. And I don't mean that in some spooky, but I mean I'll be holy like God. I will be perfect like God. Sinless. Sin-free, amen? Completely sin-free. Every once in a while, um, uh, some of the ladies in our church, they have to go get checked uh, uh, and say, hey, we want to make sure the cancer's staying away. We want to make sure it's not making a comeback. And, and um, uh, we want to make, we, every once in a while, we got to go get an exam and make sure that we're, we're, we're clean. We're, we're clean and clear. You know, I think that's what church ought to be every single week for the Christian. Every single week, the Christian ought to walk into the doors and go, okay, is my, let's do an exam Let's, let's put the x-ray machine up there. It, Lord, is there any wicked way in me? Is there any iniquity in me? Lord, I don't want to hide it from you. Lord, I don't want it to be in there. Lord, if you see something in me, help me to get it out. I want to be clean and free of it. But as long as we live on this earth, we're going to need those checkups. But one day, those checkups will be gone. I won't need that anymore. I'll be like Christ. Now, as I, want, as I strive toward that goal and I run my race of hearing well done, and that's what I want to hear, uh, I want to hear well done, and um, uh, uh, I have to evaluate, evaluate my decisions. Now, my decisions come from one of two places. How do, I get, how do I gauge my decisions? I gauge my decisions by, this is what I want to call it this morning, my way or the highway. My way or the highway. You know, you've heard that said before. You, we're going to do things my way or you can hit the highway. Well, this morning, I want to take that play on words and, and, and I want to, to ch change it up a little bit and say, my way is my way. My way is Jake Jackson's way. My way is the flesh way. My way is the carnal way. My way is the lust way. My, lay, my way is the easy way. It's the shortcut way. And a lot of times I feel it's the right way. But the truth of the matter is, is that there is a higher way. It's his way. Now, if I want to hear well done, and you can't avoid it, you're going to make decisions. So gauge your decisions by the highway. Isaiah chapter 53, if you're there with me, I want to read the first six verses. The Bible says, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Verse 6 is our text verse. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Heavenly Father, help us during this, uh, this short time that we have together. Make it profitable to us. Uh, help us to decide right now to listen on purpose. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My way or the highway. My way 
or the highway. Now, that means um, that concerning just any particular matter, any decision that you have to make. It's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. Um, uh, uh, they, as they would also say, uh, the, the saying is, is you can take it or leave it. You can take it or leave it. Um, we are tested uh, uh, by three enemies daily, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The world, the flesh, and the devil. And I got to tell you, um, the worst enemy out of all of them, and you'll find this uh, to be true if, if you'll get what I'm saying, of course, is the, de the devil is the author of it. He's the one that kind of sits on the throne, and, and, and he's got it all kind of going. But the closer I get to Jesus, the world isn't my worst enemy. The world is something that I believe can be changed and reached. The world, the, excuse me, not that only that I believe it, but the Bible teaches it. The world can be changed if it would just go back to Jesus, amen. Um, uh, uh, and not the devil. I don't find the devil behind every, uh, under every rock and around every corner leaping out to get me, even though, like I said, I know he's the author of it, so to speak. With a, uh, uh, but it's my flesh, my flesh. The closer I get to Christ, I find... Um, uh, and I, I understand the, the teaching of Paul where, you know, we, we die daily. And, and the more you feed the spirit, the more the flesh dies. That's a lesson that I've yet to see realized. It's more the more that I feed the spirit, the more the flesh fights against it. Man, some of these strongholds, they feel like they, they go down deeper and they sink in deeper. And they say, no, we're here to stay. The more you try to get right with God, the more we're sinking in. But mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds. I take more faith in the Bible. Uh, and the Bible is not true uh, simply because I believe it's true. It's true, and I just chose to believe it. Uh, and that's what everybody needs to do. And there are bits and pieces of the Bible I choose to believe or not. When I sit down to read this or I open it up or I carry it, I have already decided it's true and I choose to believe it. That's why I'm spending my time in believing it. There aren't just bits and pieces that I'm going to decide to believe or not. There, are may, there may be pieces that are hard to swallow. There may be pieces that are hard to understand. But it's all true. Let God be true and all men liars. Let God be true and Jake Jackson a liar. Uh, let um, God be right and Jake Jackson wrong. Uh, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Hiles preached a sermon some years ago. I don't know when he preaches. God and I don't always agree. God and I don't always agree. And he talked about things in the Bible that were just flat out, this is what it is, this is how it is. And Brother Howell said, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it, but God's still right. There are things going on in your life you don't agree with. I don't agree that Kinsey should be, or uh, Kirsten should be paralyzed, but she is. God's right and I'm wrong. Get this, God's right and Kirsten's wrong. She doesn't agree. You don't agree with uh, things that happened in your life. Folks, just, just, let's just, let's just settle it. You, I'm telling you right now, you can't have the peace that passes all understanding. You're not going to be able to, to embrace the full message of the Bible if you still are on the outs with God about him being wrong on some things. No, no, no. You can disagree with him, but he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Um, uh, and, and when it comes to my way or the highway, my way or the highway, I got I, I admit to you, as a man, sometimes I choose my way. Sometimes I choose my way. And I have found that the, 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 the spirit of God in me is gracious, and he's kind, and he's patient, and he's merciful. And he says, okay, the next time this comes around, choose the highway. Choose the highway. And it's difficult to do. It's difficult to do, but this morning I want to um, I want to take this 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 um, uh, my way or the highway, and I want to point out that choosing between uh, our way and God's way, and God's way is the highway. Uh, I, I hope by the end of the message you'll start gauging your decisions by this. Uh, Isaiah fifty five nine says, "For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts." The high, road, the high road is uh, always considered as the right path. The high road. Man, take, take the high road. Take the high road. Um, uh, I, uh, I've heard that so many times, and we've changed it over the years. Be the bigger man. Be the bigger man or, or do the right thing. But take the high road. Take the high road means be above that. Rise above that circumstance and take the high road. And that high road is God's path. Isaiah 40, verse number three says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a high 
way for our God. Now, life is a journey. Life is a journey, and it's got its ups and downs, and it's good and bad, but life is a journey. And we're not all traveling at the same pace. Uh, we're not all traveling, uh, I mean, uh, eventually, and uh, um, uh, at the end of our road, the grave, when we all die, we're all going to the same place if you're saved. But ask yourself this morning, which road are you taking to your destination? Raise your hand if you say, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I know I've been born again. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Okay, great. How, how will you arrive there? How will you arrive? Will you arrive saying, man, I tried to stay close to that plumb line. It's not a close line. It's, it, I got way off over here, but I, I came back. I came back over here. Uh, uh, or are you saying, I, I took the highway or I lived life by my way. Now, your status in life, and we all want a good status, but our status in life is not determined so much by um, uh, where you were born, or to whom you were born. Of course, we as humans put a lot of stock in that. Oh, that's the Trump family. Oh, that's the Gates family. Oh, that's the uh, Rockefeller family. Or that's the, uh, you know, whoever, your, your, your name, the Jacksons, the Jules, the, the, uh, uh, the Johnson family, whoever. Uh, but to where you were born or whom you were born, uh, but it's more determined by uh, the choices that you make. The cho- you know there are rich people in prison this morning. You know there are rig- religious people in prison this morning. It's not... Where they were born, it's not that it's not, ge- it's not a geographical fault. It's not to whom they were born. It's not a parent's fault. Even though um, it was a, a big time, a big thing when I was a kid, uh, I heard a lot of preachers preaching on it about that generation blaming their parents for their faults. I'm the way I am because my parents, and granted, a lot of adulthood is weeding out a lot of your childhood experiences. I get that. I I understand that. But when you die, you will stand before God and you will answer for yourself. And your parents will answer for themselves. Don't think, listen, you might have had jacked up uh, uh, parents, but they'll answer to God. You might have grown up in a terrible society, but that society will answer to God. You are responsible for your decisions, your own decisions. Our life is really determined by the choices that we make. So I'll ask you again this morning. I want you to ask it within your own heart. Which way are you taking in life? Who's, what path are you going to choose in life? Your way or the highway? Your way or the highway? Now, you say, I, Brother Jake, or Pastor Jake, I want to choose the highway. Great. Choose that as your your default setting, if you will. I choose the highway. You're still going to revert. There's still, gonna, there's still a virus in you. <laughs> You're still going to choose your own way sometimes. You're still going to go, ah, yeah, yeah, I did that. All right, fall down, get back up. It's not the end of the world. But I'll tell you today, if you say, well, I'm going to live by my way. And, when, and this is a way, folks, a lot of Christians have lived their life. I'm going to live my life my way because I know that my sins are paid for and I can kind of live how I want to live. And when life gets really hard and I have a big decision to make, then I'll pull out the plumb line. Nah, let's just pull out the plumb line the whole time. Let's just pull out that straight edge with every cut. Let's just make every cut as best as possible because the whole word of God is good for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness. It's, 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 good living. It's good housekeeping that lasts through every generation and to every single one. Now, which will you live your life by? Your way or God's highway? Now, number one, number one, get this. Uh, I'll be, uh, let's see, I have 15. Let's do it in 12 minutes. And I don't want to force feed you anything. Um, uh, but I, I hope that you'll listen to this. I hope that you'll choose the highway. Now, you're going to choose your way or the highway to get to the land. And I like, um, what's it called? Uh, Dad, um, I don't even remember what, we, what it was called. Alliteration, where every word starts with the same un or the same letter or the same. It's got a, a, a design to it. But uh, you'll choose your way or the highway to get to pleasure. To get to pleasure. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And in the end of that is mirth and heaviness. Folks, a lot of the world's got a smile on right now. They're lying. Their heart's just as heavy as as anybody's. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4.4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, a sinful pleasure. Here you go. Your way or God's way. A sinful pleasure or the Lord's pleasure. A sinful pleasure or the Lord's pleasure? 
short-term pleasure or long-term pleasure. I have um, uh, something going on with my foot that I think is going to need surgically repaired eventually. Um, and when I get to it, I get to it. But what I'm going to have to do, do is I'm going to have to go through some pain to get to that long-term comfort. It's going to have to cause me some issues up front. It's going to have to cause me some discomfort, some time down to get to long-term pleasure. Otherwise, I stay in a short-term pleasure. I can put a brace on it. I can, um, um, uh, James says, put an ace bandage on it. Like that's the cure-all. Uh, uh, put, uh, put an ace bandage on it or um, uh, take a pill, amen. Sure, hey, pain pill. Pain pill, pain pill, short term, short term, short term, short term, until you need more and need more and need more. And all you've done is cause a bigger problem. What you got to do is you got to go through the go through the valley to get to the land of pleasure. Do you want sinful pleasure or the Lord's pleasure? You want short term pleasure or long term pleasure? How about uh, um, a spiritual uh, uh, pleasure or fleshly pleasure? You know, spiritual pleasure doesn't come with guilt. Spiritual pleasure doesn't come with repentance. It come, it's pleasure. It's through and through pleasure. But when I yield to the flesh and I yield to lusts, there's always a guilt. There's always a regret. There's always a fret. And there's always a debt that has to be paid. Spiritual pleasure or fleshly pleasure. Now, God's way or the highway? God's way or your way, the highway, or your way. You want pleasure? How you get it is up to you. How you get it is up to you. But I tell you, if you take the highway, it's long lasting, it's refreshing, and there's no regret that comes with it. Number two, you choose your way or the highway to get to plenty. Plenty, plenty of peace, plenty of love, plenty of comfort, Plenty of contentment. Proverbs 28, verse 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Amen. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. God's saying, don't be, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. A lot of folks, we're, we're greedy. Proverbs 22, it says, um, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. By humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So you can ask yourself, let's, let's do a comparison here. My way or the highway, covetousness or contentment? Covetous or contentment? I, I've been teaching a lot of that. And I, I, I say the things that I say from the pulpit at, at home. And I, Houston the other day was looking at a car magazine. I said, what are you doing? He said, coveting. <laughs> I said, well, quit it. Put it away. I stopped looking at those car magazines because, number one, I can't afford them. Number two, I'm not getting them. Number three, it's impractical to have the thing that I want. I've got a family of how many of us are there? Seven of us. There's seven of us. I'm not getting a Nova Supersport anytime soon. I'm not getting one. And they say that the average American household to raise a child to maturity is $233,000. Not in my house it isn't. Houston said something the other day, well, I don't want those shoes. I said, son, these have been endowed to you. They are called hand-me-downs. We cannot break the cycle of this great American tradition. <laughs> hand-me-downs, baby. Uh, the children of Israel didn't have that in the wilderness. God just made their clothes grow with them. Uh, but um, uh, covetousness or contentment. Covetousness or contentment. Most people are never satisfied. They're never satisfied with their wife. They're not satisfied with their kids. They're not satisfied with their husband. They're not satisfied with their job. They're not satisfied with their looks. They're not satisfied with how they are. They're always trying to fend it off or to fight off or look for the next better thing. We're not satisfied. Got to have it now. Need it now. Must do it now. But the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain, and I like to gain. What did I, I said something the other day. My dad dissed me. Oh, man, I walked out, and I said something about gaining, and he said, what, more weight? Blah, blah, blah. Get you, boy. Uh, but he, what are you getting, more weight? And I said, like, man, come on. He said, you're a truck driver. Watch out. I know. I get out of my truck. I, I do squats. I do push-ups. I do all kinds of stuff, run around my truck. I walk back and forth. I'm not, I'm not, going, I'm not doing that again. My knees can't handle that stuff. But I, wanna, I, I, I like gain. I like gain. I like more money. I like more, I like more wealth. I like more love. I like more peace. I like more comfort. I like more heat. Listen, y'all complaining about how hot it was. Hey, that's 80 degrees. Let's turn it up a little. 
Where's Nebuchadnezzar when you need him? Uh, I'll take heat. I'll take heat over cold uh, anytime. But uh, um, uh, the land of plenty, I like more. You know what I want more of? I want more members. I want more salvations. I want more baptisms. I want, oh, more people, more problems. What, that he can't handle? That he can't handle? I feel like if we, if we stand on the word of God and we do what's right, and we hey, listen, we'll cast out the scorner and contention will cease. I think Three Rivers has been around long enough to know who we need to kick out and who we need to bring in. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to fix everybody, if the listen, if I can't, if the Holy Spirit of God can't fix you, Jake Jackson and Doug Jackson and all the little Indians and all the chiefs, they ain't gonna fix you either. Now bounce, you scorner. You say, Brother Jack, where'd that come from? Because I want more members, but I don't want all of them. I don't want everybody in Fort Wayne coming to my church because a bunch of them are apostates. And heretics and vile and scorpions and snakes and they'll 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 ruin the whole lot. But I'm I'm content. I'm not I'm not scratching aching going. How do I build a church? How do I build a church? How do I'm not reading how, how to build a church books. I'm reading how to go soul winning books. How to lead a Catholic to the to Christ books. I'm reading like uh, stuff that'll fire me up to obey the great commission. He didn't say build a good, build a great church. He said, go out and tell and Christ will build his church. So I'm content with three years Baptist church. I'm content with what we have and where we are, but it doesn't mean I don't look to gain. You see, gain comes from godliness and being content with what you have. I'm content with our bus. I'm content with our building. I'm content with our people. But God says, oh, cool. Look at those godly people who are content with what's with a problem, who are content with, with it's not the best. Let's give them great gain. Yes, sir. Great godliness with contentment. Hey, you, what do you want? Crookedness or consistency? For a long time, I'd go into a job interview and say, I'm just looking for consistency. My life needs consistency. I need to know on, I don't need to know that I'm getting paid 500 this week and 300 this week and 900 that week and 1200 that week. I need some consistency for my life. I need a schedule. I need something to live by. I got a book to live by. I've got a creed to live by. I've got some patriotism to live by. I need some consistency. And they said, well, we can guarantee you, guarantee minimum pay this every single week. I said, that sounds like my kind of job. And then it kind of fell apart. Apart from there, after after losing contracts and different things like that. But I, I don't like hopping into to deals with crooked people and crooked things and crooked ways. The Bible says um, uh, uh, that um, uh, uh, God can't bless a crooked and perverse nation. A crooked and perverse nation. Well, I don't want crookedness. I don't want to lie. Folks, I fill out my own sheet for work. I fill it out and I, uh, uh, and I say, this is what I worked and this is how many hours and this is what I did and this is where I went and this is how many l- miles that I logged. I could lie. Well, what is Philippians? On Wednesdays we've been teaching, hey, think on these things. What things? True things, honest things, good things, true things, the right things. What is that? That's the highway. That's the highway. And God looks down to see who is on the highway and blesses the people that are on the highway. And bless God, the highway is not, it didn't say it's the easy way. Actually, it's the hard way up front. The highway is hard up front, but boy, oh boy, does it smooth out on the other end. It smooths out on the other end. Now, you can have your way, which is smooth up front, but boy, oh boy, does it get rough at the end. I'd rather go through it here and get it smooth on the other end, amen? Now, crooked or consistent? Crooked or consistent? Here's one. Criminal acts. You say, criminal acts? I'm a Brother Jackson. I'm a Christian. And the preacher said, you robbed God. And they said, where have we robbed God? He said, in your tithes and in your offerings. Folks, not just in your tithe and in your offering, but how about charity? Paul said, I can have all these gifts of ministry. I can speak it, I can talk it, I can act like it. But he, now get this, hang on these words. He said, if I don't have charity, I am nothing. I am nothing. Charity. It's good to be charitable. It's good to be charitable. There's somebody I could still be holding a grudge to till this day. I could still be like, no, you're not allowed back in my circle. I'm holding the grudge against you because of what you did in the past. And, and, and I'd be a hypocrite for doing that, by the way, but I've, I've grown out of that. And this person was, was not sob story into me, was not, yeah, and listen, I'm not proclaiming my own goodness. I'm talking about charity. 
is a brother in Christ and talking about just life. And it's hard. And we're kind of both in the same boat. And he said, da, 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 finances. And he's got a family and, and all these different things. And he didn't know it, but I plugged in his phone number, went in my account, boop, sent him a hundred bucks. You say, oh, brother Jake, that's so kind. No, that's Christian. Hang kindness. You can have all the kindness in the world. If it ain't Christian kindness, it's good for nothing. That's Christian. Do the right thing. And he said, man, you didn't have to do that. I said, yeah, I did. The Bible commanded me, constrained me to do that. It said, if my brother hath need of something and I have it by me and I don't give it, what kind of friend is that? Oh, you got a flat tire? Man, I've got that exact size in my car. I, I, I've got, oh, you need a lug nut wrench? Yeah, I've got one right here, but be warm and fed. Bless God, take five minutes and get out and help him. Do something for him. Send him a hundred bucks. Give him five bucks. Give him a brook in the way last week. Be a brook in the way for somebody. And that's what this is all about. What Christian is all, life is all about. You say, Brother Jake, I don't, I'm struggling to make it. I'm not talking about your dollar bills. I'm talking about your time and your talent and just a heart that God put in you to say, I'm going to try to love somebody today. Charity. Do we rob our fellow man? Are we criminals of charity? Do we steal charity and steal honor from God by not being charitable? Not tithing is a criminal act. It is robbing God. And I'm not preaching on tithing. I'm preaching on obedience. Obedience to the high road. Will we walk the high road or will we walk our road? Now, the, the land of pleasure, the land of plenty, or the land of peace. How are you going to get to the land of peace? You think you can buy your way there? Oh, I need to stop. You think you can buy your way there? You think you can exercise your way there? You think you can sculpt your body the way there? You think you can put it in your mind to be there? No, unless you put in the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Right here, Isaiah 48 says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. There is no peace. There is no peace for wickedness. If you live a life of wickedness, there's no peace. I want you to just chalk this up right now. All your friends on Facebook who look like they're living the life, if they're not living for Christ, they don't have peace. I don't care if they're showing you pictures from Bermuda and their new car and their new house and their new, well, look at us in our fashionable, they have no peace. You say, well, that's just prejudice. No, that's Bible. There is no peace, saith the Lord, not Jake. Say it the Lord, not the Baptist church. Say it the Lord for the wicked. And if you're living in wickedness, if you've got a, 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 a closet in your life of wickedness, if you've got a room of wickedness, you don't have peace. I didn't say that you weren't saved, but you don't have peace. And you say, why don't I have peace? Well, clean out the closet. Clean out the wickedness out of your life. Psalms 119, 165, I love this. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Now, I'll tell you this, and I, and I need to close. You cannot love God's law if it's not something you're trying to live by. You will resist against it. You will look at it as, as this do's and don'ts of spiritual religion. No, that's called you lack a relationship. And if you oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, David said. Folks, we've got a nation of pills Pills. I'll tell you what, you'd have to take less pills if you'd ponder on the Lord. Less pills, more pondering. Less medication, more meditation. And by the way, don't ever say the pastor has preached against pills as your first resource. Yeah. As your, as, as listen, I take your medication. But if you, if you don't, if you lack a relationship with the Lord, you're going to be pill, on pills forever. Uh, uh, take, take your medicine, do what you're supposed to do, but you better put in some meditation and you better put, put in on some pottery. Psychiatrist or what? The, the Psalms 119 says, the precepts of the Lord. Psychiatrist. Now, I, I need to stop. I don't want to stop, but I'm stopping. Your way or the highway? You know what? I, you know what I, it just sets me off every time I go to pick up Bill in the morning? There's this, this, this Presbyterian church downtown. Faith mixed with art. Uh, they had a, the, the flag of sodomy, which was robbed as the sign of a promise from God. Hanging on there. We love everybody here. All are welcome here. We have a sodomite speaking for us this morning. It's not a church. They, take church off your board. And a lot of people have religion. They have no relationship. 
If they had a relationship, they wouldn't have a, a homosexual speaking for them. If they had a relationship, they wouldn't have music. We let our religion speak through our art. Okay, you fruitcake. You say, well, that sounds inflammatory. Good. You ever read what Paul and Stephen and these guys had to say in here? Did we just read what Isaiah said? What, I, what did Isaiah just say? There is no peace for the wicked. You don't have peace. I can go to sit down and poke them folks in their chest and guarantee you they own their robes and their cross and their colors and all their all that garbage and say they don't have peace because they're wicked. They're wicked because they have a pagan religion. They don't they don't worship the God Almighty. I saw some. Listen, I, I wouldn't give you. I wouldn't. I wouldn't spit on a church who have these people just falling and shaking and 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 and, and uh, 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 skipping around the church. And and you know what? Most people have dance offs in church, and it ain't about God. It's about you and your looks and how you did. And you're just so filled with the Spirit and you laugh uncontrollably. That's a mockery of what this book is all about. It's a joke. And we have more people in this country. America's on its way to hell because more church churches uh, 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 push religion and tradition and outward appearance than they do relationship. They've chosen their way. They've chosen the Pope's way. They've chosen Joseph Smith's way. They've chosen Muhammad's way. They, hey, hey, they've chosen the pastor of their church's way and not the highway. I'm not just here to pick on other denominations. You're not going to find every independent. Now get that word, independent. Every independent Baptist church of the same cloth. Some, some churches are ran like, what in the world's going on here? Some of them are unkind. I went to a church down in Texas, um, and uh, I was there, and big name church, and, and I went to the church in Texas, and... Not one person came up and shook my hand. Not one person opened a door for me. Not one person gave me a bulletin, gave me a visitor's card, even acknowledged I was there. They're not all the same. Pastor Jackson used to teach our church, be friendly, be friendly, be friendly, be friendly. Be friendly to people. Some churches are unfriendly. Some churches are too friendly. People get right up in your bubble. Come on in, sit right next to me. No, brother. That's that Presbyterian church downtown. Uh, but uh, re religion or relationship? Hey, reformation or regeneration? I, I, and I know, folks, I know you. I, I know that I know you, and, and I, I believe all y'all to be saved, and I know a lot of your testimonies, and I believe you to have a relationship. But it would be a, 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 a terrible thing if I just got up here and taught every week on do this, do this, do this, be better here, and try harder here, and, and have all these things here, and not urge the relationship first. Mary, 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 a bunch of y'all Marthas, a bunch, a bunch of y'all work, 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 but you make sure you have that Mary aspect and have a, have a relationship with Jesus. And then don't ever try to be righteous for man. Righteous for the Lord. Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. Folks, I want our church. Don't you want to go to a blessed church? Don't you want to go to a church where you're like, man, God did that. God was there today. God moved today. God got on that person's heart today. I think God met with us last week. I think he was there. And I think God goes to a place where he's exalted and he's magnified and his son is loved and his son is honored and his son is worshiped. And we go out and we tell others about Jesus. God goes to places like that. Well, he's already with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you haven't been in a church service where the Holy Spirit was, I'm talking present, where you knew he's weighing on my heart. Now today, somebody's been taking, your, you've been taking your way. And I tell you, as a man, as a man in the flesh, sometimes I take my way. But I'll tell you what, man, if you're missing Wednesdays, you're missing out. I, I, I can't tell you, it's just become, I've begun to measure all my thoughts and everything. And I'm telling you, it's a fist fight in my head. A fight by what this, what's going on in this mind of mine. What, engaging in battle right here. So the next time you have to choose and the decisions that you have to make, choose the highway. Bow your head and close your eyes if you would, please. Choose the highway. Because we say choose the highway or my way, but if we were really to say my way, what we really mean is the low way, the wrong way. We could say the right way or the wrong way. Scripture says that there was a time when man did what was right according to his according to his heart and according to his eyes and according to his mind. 
He did what was right according to what he thought. You see, but that's the thing is don't don't always just think that what you think is the right thing. Find out what God thinks. What does God think about your situation? What does God think about the decisions that you have to make? And then try to cut your life as close to the plumb line, that T-square, as close as possible. The word of God. The word of God. David, I think one of the greatest writers in the Bible that was allowed through the Holy Spirit of God to pin some things. And I, he used a lot of emotion. Psalm 119 will tell you the, about the importance of the Bible. Psalm 119, it's all about the Bible, the whole chapter. The Bible has to become your authority. Most adults in here, you have no authority. There's nobody to boss you around or tell you what to do. But the fact of the matter is we need that because we're sinful and we're unruly and we think things and say things and we make the wrong decisions. You know, we don't have to make all the wrong decisions. We can make the right ones by taking the highway. As Miss Jennifer begins to play, would you stand with me? Ask God, you will come forward this morning and say, God, I want to start taking the highway. God, I've taken a lot of the, my way. I need to take the highway. Hey, you, you might be on the highway. Ask the Lord, Heavenly Father, I, I don't want to veer from this path. Heavenly Father, help me to stay out of the way. The highway and all your decisions. Don't let life become too complacent too at ease because then we begin to rest on ourselves our our um, our own schedule and our own uh, hobbies of course there, there's a lot of damage that can be done through idleness so you keep your mind fixed on the Lord Lord what would you have me to do what you have me to do? God honors that. He sheds light on that. Thy word, he says, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Choose the highway. right you can remain standing your way or God's way amen pretty simple uh, message there and, and uh, uh, I didn't think we had to put on our spiritual scuba scoot, scuba suit and go to the depths of scripture today that was I think on on, on the surface message but practical stuff God's way I want to hear well done anybody here want to hear well done I want to hear well done now uh, it's possible he wouldn't tell us that it could be attained if it couldn't be attained amen and it can be um, just Keep that heart in a one, one connection with the Lord. Uh, I promise you, your flesh will not always follow. But if you'll keep that heart tuned with the Lord, can two walk together lest they be agreed? You can keep walking with the Lord. Luke, go prop those open for me in the back, please. And Brother Kevin, 